today we have Manoj with us, uh, who is going to talk about uh, tips from the trenches, uh, accessibility testing. Uh, and Manoj is a principal technologist at ThoughtWorks. I'm super honored to be hosting him today. So I'm sure we all will enjoy his session. So I'll hand it over to you, Manoj. Sure, thank you. Um, hey everyone, so happy to be here. And thanks Parveen, I'm equally honored too. Uh, thank for all others. We have been uh, meeting each other in different conferences. So it's so glad to see Parveen again. Um, so as Parveen already shared, today's session is going to be uh, tips from the trenches, accessibility testing. And uh, before that, uh, I'm Manoj. And as Parveen uh, mentioned, uh, uh, we work for ThoughtWorks and uh, I'm a principal technologist. Um, I like to be called myself as a T-shaped uh, technologist where I go across breadth as well as um, go deep dive in tech where uh, um, think QA and um, uh, a few other uh, like DevOps and mobile um, and think React frontend, um, accessibility, performance. There's a number of things that I uh, do. They never one thing. I easily get bored. So I try to go hands on with different techs. So that's how I get experience in multiple areas. Um, so today, uh, specifically, I'm going to share about uh, accessibility testing and how I got involved. Um, so this was uh, during one of my um, engagements when I worked with an insurance provider. Um, in Australia, where I got the opportunity to um, work uh, more on, you know, tra transforming front end from Angular to React, when yeah, as a, mostly as a single page application, right? I think this was at least six years back. Uh, so you could imagine um, at those stages, React was still picking up, and um, as everyone, uh, you know, the tech as a dev, they are trying to uh, move from one piece of uh, technology to the other. I think framework. I think uh, it's basically due to try new stuff. And single page application was trending. Uh, I don't know if it's still trending. Um, so I still see a few um, providers, insurance providers specifically, as well as a few forms that still follow that pattern. Um, and what's more challenging when you do that is uh, try to um, bake in accessibility with that, right? I think it's becoming even more challenged. So I'm going to share uh, some tips from there. And I think that's uh, from so since since then, since uh, I developed my uh, passion around accessibility and I start researching about it whenever I get a chance as a, as a consultant at ThoughtWorks, uh, whenever I speak to my clients, I always, um, you know, keep this as one of the uh, agenda items and try to understand what, what is their uh, mindset about uh, empathy and inclusive culture, you know, all around these things and um, going to share a um, couple of things in terms of uh, um, accessibility itself, what it means. And um, as a key takeaway, if you are someone who's new to accessibility, what is something that you should take away from the session? And um, after you understood what is accessibility, I think uh, the most important uh, or the immediate key takeaway would be to uh, see, uh, this is all good, I understand accessibility. Now, how will I fit this within my um, SDLC, which is the uh, my life cycle, software development life cycle. And then more specifically, deep dive into uh, accessibility testing uh, perspectives to see uh, how quickly I can check. Um, because if you're in a greenfield project, that's great. You can start baking in. Uh, you can. Uh, I'm sure there will be a couple of takeaways from the good for all SDLC faces that I have. Uh, but if uh, it's a brownfield and if you already have something, um, so you could go ahead and uh, you know implement some of the uh, testing features from there. Uh, before that, I will actually start my captioning. This is something that I um, usually do for all my accessibility sessions. Um, I just forgot, uh, but nevertheless, we are never you know too late. It's just second slide and just the agenda. Um, let's get started. So a primer on accessibility. So um, what is first thing that comes to your mind when you hear accessibility? Um, Wish this was an in-person conference so I can, you know, hear all your voices. But unfortunately, uh, we can't do that. Um, so accessibility to me is all about how easy I can do things, right? No matter what is my uh, situation right now, what is what is I'm capable of, uh, what I'm able to do, and a number of things that comes into picture, right? If if the things around us are something quite naturally aligned to what humans can do, or you know, we humans have done um, a lot of damage to our environments already, um, making us easy, easy for our lives. Uh, but that said, uh, there are uh, different set of people, uh, different uh, persona group um, who have different set of needs. And often we, we forget that as well, right? So before I uh, deep dive on the core principles of accessibility and all that, right? So this is more of something that stuck me when I, I was looking at what is accessibility and how easily that I can say to someone, right? 
Um, with the next slide, I want you to, I'll make a quick pause, probably say um, 20 seconds or 10 seconds. Um, you have a read for yourself. And I hope that will give you some sort of sense on uh, what is that you're going to learn. If you're someone who's very new to accessibility, or if you're already someone who know accessibility, that's great. Uh, this is something that you could also go forward and you know look at implementing it. I'll take a pause here. Cool, the pause is over. So I'm sure this is something um, um, would have already reflected in your mind, right? So I don't know how many of you had a smile when you, after you read this, um, I had the first time when I looked at this uh, picture, uh, which is simple, simple and easy enough that we think, oh yeah, it really makes sense. And how do we usually, you know, forget things, you know, right from, uh, you know, our architecture buildings. We, we talk a lot about, uh, you know, our country, uh, I think especially coming from India, uh, the transport has been bad, the roads are bad, and it's not accessible, but how, you know, what's the impact that we are making, right? I think, forget about the technology, forget about digital accessibility, but this is all about um, what you can do to uh, the human that is standing right next to you, uh, who may be healthy, who may not be, uh, who may be temporarily uh, uh, disabled, and it could be a number of situations that I spoke about, right? Um, but when you think about that, I think that's where um, you may start making a small change uh, for the better of the world. So with that, key uh, takeaway as a learning. Um, to me, accessibility is not just about physical conditions, right? It is not about physical condition at all. Um, I perceive it more of a limited human interaction. So if we understand what that limited human interaction can do for our day-to-day -day lives, and if we find a ways to include them in the things that we do, I think that is great, right? Like say, for example, if I'm using my computer to book you know, flight tickets or air tickets, um, yeah, it is developed with some ideology in mind that, okay, with, with someone who knows, civilized enough to know how to use a computer, who can read English, um, who knows to use operate mouse, I think they can go ahead and click. But if you think of the other persona where someone who's blind or someone who is um, uh, having vision but can't see different colors, uh, you know, what is something that they will do, right? It's, it'll become very hard for them to, uh, you know, understand and, and go further with that. So to me, that is all about it. So um, this is something that um, I advocate wherever I go. And, and uh, it's, it's beat, uh, I'm, I'm building a small house next to me and I'm, I'm making it more accessible as well. So that any guest that comes to my house will be accessible. And, and this is going to take forward in, in multiple ways in the society as well, right? Um, and, and, and I think this is something that everyone should keep in mind and accessibility is not something, uh, you know, uh, you need a special um, learnings. Uh, and of course it has few nuances that you should learn and that's, the, that's this session is going to be all about. So end of this 45 minutes, I'm sure you'll be able to understand what are those at least uh, and, and research by your own and try and contribute that. So um, as I've been keep on telling about uh, the number of situations, right? So this is a beautiful piece of uh, a kit that Microsoft has uh, provided, which is the Microsoft Inclusive Design Kit, where uh, it says about common things that humans do, right? So humans can touch, humans can see, humans can hear what is going around, and humans can, of course, speak. Um, but if we look at people who have some sort of disabilities, um, yeah, it's it's not their fault, right? I think some people born with some sort of disabilities um, and some people um, happen to be accidentally uh, become uh, one of that, uh, you know, vulnerable to become one of those um, uh, disabilities and then also situational. Like if you look at, say, for example, the first one, like touch, um, there could be chances where you could have seen a human uh, born without an arm. And there's there's this nothing wrong about it, right? I think it's um, all about if you find a ways to include them in our day-to-day -day lives, and I think that's great. Uh, and an arm injury, I've broken my arms a couple of times during my you know childhood days, and I <laughs> know how hard it is. And even if you're a new parent, uh, you're holding a baby in your hand, and if you want to, you know, uh, put a lullaby on your YouTube or want to hear a song, and of course, you have to operate it, everything on your single hand, right? Um, if, if, the applications that you um, access is not able to do things. Um, I think that is where we are talking about inaccessible. So how do we make it accessible? And I think moving on from here, um, digital accessibility, that's where it comes through. So now, so far we have heard about 
uh, what is accessibility and in real world how people think accessibility means and i think that picture that i showed you would have uh, given you some insights about how you should start perceiving accessibility itself right um yeah i think uh, i'm i hope my audio is clear yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 okay cool. right. so um what i want to say is um so similarly if the applications that you develop um, isn't accessible, then you're creating a barriers and making their impairment a disability. So the key, the key words to notice here is the word impairment. Definitely they have an impairment, but it doesn't mean that, you know, uh, they can't do things. They can do things uh, provided if you find a ways to include them. And that is, this is all going to be. Now that's, this is great Manoj. I understand um, uh, you have opened my eyes. <laughs> now tell me, um, how should I make them, uh, you know, uh, uh, make them use the applications with that limited interactions? Uh, when it comes to especially around uh, digital accessibility, um, there is a group, W3C group. I'm sure most of you have heard about it. For those of you who don't know about W3C, uh, it's it's the Worldwide Web Consortium. So uh, Worldwide W3C standards define an open web platform uh, for application development uh, that has unprecedented potential to enable developers uh, to create sort of rich interactive experiences. So um, any spec, any technology that you see like PDFs, for example, how PDFs should behave in a web browser, um, like say uh, automation tools like Selenium, how it should drive the browsers. So everything has a spe specification. And if you're developing one such, it should abide by that. And that is what W3C is all about. And when it comes to accessibility, uh, there is a small group within W3C uh, called the Web Accessibility Initiative, which is the WAI group, WAI, where um, they have uh, given a beautiful set of recommendations and guiding principles, uh, which is the uh, WCAG, we call it as WCAG, which is WCAG. And then that's nothing but the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. And um, this itself is, will take a lot of time if I get into uh, what the guidelines are, but I have a, a good picture that I will show you next couple of slides. And um, um, when you look at these principles, uh, the next question that will come to you, come to your mind is, um, this is really great. I understand there are some principles that I can look at, but is there a way that I can measure against, uh, you know, what is the um, target that I should have? If, if I'm taking accessibility is one of my bets that I'm going to solve in next year, how should I measure against? Um, so typically, um, all these guiding principles has some sort of, um, you know, levels onto it. So uh, I'm going to cover this uh, as well in next couple of slides. But basically, all you should think is um, that is, you know, level one, that is level two, and that is level three, right? Uh, apparently, that's nothing but level A, level AA, and level AAA. Um, as you see, level A means um, you're trying to adhere to the basic level of accessibility, which means um, you're trying to address and make sure your applications are accessible with some basic level of accessibility, like making sure at least the basics are covered. Like, so you know, something is better than nothing, right? <laughs> so, uh, or if you're, you know, if if you really wanted to solve, like, you know, this inclusive space, uh, and if you wanted to be your applications and products to be more inclusive, um, then probably you know, you could choose most common barriers where uh, you know uh, it's been estimated around uh, seventy percent of the uh, people with some sort of impairments will fall under this category. Um, and it's been overall estimated around 1 billion people around the world have some sort of disability, right? And, and if you're building a product, which means, uh, and, and if, it's, if that product is not accessible, then you could imagine that, you know, you're losing out of business on that spe specific set of people. So, um, and, and the next level is AAA, if that's the gold standard, um, which has around like 61 rules that you should abide by, right? And I think this is the levels that you could choose and putting this all together, uh, this is what the WCAG, uh, you know, tol it tells about um, principles. It 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 suggests that your application should be perceivable, operable, understandable, and robust. And it has some guidelines on what you should do about it. And say, as a company, if you uh, decide that okay, let me start with some basic accessibility like level A, then it gives you some guidelines on how you know these are the things that you, um, your website or mobile application should abide by. And if you feel yeah, I'm already done with A, and I'm going a little bit aggressive and making sure uh, I can to uh, you know, special set of people. So that's where you know level AA comes into picture. So like that, it goes on and on. And I think level uh, AAA is, is um, it's, it's, you know, it's practically um, uh, impossible. I wouldn't say impossible, practically challenging uh, because it has to adhere to a lot of things. And I think that's where the interesting conversation starts to begin between a product owner, a BA and a QA because a lot of interacting uh, challenging sessions will happen. So, um, so I think 
um, in my experience, most companies try to aim at AA. I think a few government uh, agencies like uh, the Gov.UK, Gov.US, uh, in, Aust- in the Australia, in the Europe, I think those uh, agencies will try to abide by AAA. But otherwise, um, I think AA, in my opinion, seems to be uh, you know, a decent contribution that you can make uh, to make you know, the digital applications more accessible for people. Now with that, um, how can I take this back into my, you know, software development life cycle? Um, so when this is an interesting question to ask for yourself, right? Um, so this is something that I tell everywhere I go. People in, in any situations you would have seen that people tend to throw things on over the wall, <laughs> especially if you're a QA, you'll understand how things that happens. Uh, but when it comes to accessibility, um, I would say, I think, please stop there, understand. It's not someone else's job. It is everyone's responsibility. No matter whatever role that you play um, in your current job, it's your responsibility, right? Even if you're a dev, you're a product owner, a BA, um, say if you're a QA, if you're a DevOps, you have a role to play there. And I think that's you, you should collaboratively um, as, as, as a company, uh, make sure that um, you, you arrive at that sort of, uh, you know, uh, collaborative uh, and inclusive environment so that you think about those people and make sure, you know, you make ideologies and, and take it from there. And um, I'll just stay to the next one. Yeah. So to begin with in any SDS, if you're, you know, uh, if your product is just shipping up and if you're trying to do, I think um, analysis and planning is one of the first things that you would do, right? So uh, in my opinion, accessibility deserves a dedicated thinking and planning. Uh, but definitely, uh, I'm not saying it should be done in isolation, right? Rather, it should be integrated in your organization process. Um, and there should be there, and, and there will be some sort of legal requirements that will be needed, depending upon uh, uh, which country you develop your product and which where is your customer base. And if it's a global, that's great. You can just follow blindly the uh, WCAG uh, uh, guidelines and uh, pick up A or AA as a success criteria, and that, that is good enough, right? Uh, but starting, I think, early planning on accessibility, it will lead to a lot of benefit, as I mentioned earlier. Um, I think um, on an overall, if you look at um, uh, in your experience, Manoj, tell me, um, I have a Brownfield project. If I have to make my application accessibility, how much cost it will take? Uh, I mean, I can't give you an exact number, but you could imagine somewhere between, you know, 40K or 50K um, uh, dollars. Uh, so you could imagine, you know, if you spend that instead, you can avoid a legal risk, which will cost you billions and billions of uh, lawsuits. So go yourself, check it out on the internet about, um, you know, Domino's um, lawsuit, Cole's lawsuit against accessibility. You can see how much they are paying back just because their applications are not accessible, where in that country, uh, they have to be, uh, you know, accessible enough. So yeah, you could avoid legal risk. Uh, you can strengthen your brand, ex- brand experience, um, customer experience automatically. So by being more accessible, your search engine optimization definitely gets uh, increased. And um, you also, you know, try to tend to have the inclusive and productive teams. And um, so these inclusive design practices should be advocated very early enough. Like say, for example, one of the first things that you should, you will be probably doing when you um, create a product roadmap is that, um, okay, uh, A, a user um, goes to the website and do blah, blah, blah things. So when you define such sort of roadmaps, I think it's very important. You should think of um, user personas with disabilities, right? Uh, With some user interaction. So when you do that automatically, a new set of feature or a new epic will automatically create it in in an agile world, in my opinion. And that's, I've seen that happening. Um, So think about user personas with disabilities, design for user interactions, considers other experiences than a normal uh, human would do and automatically things will pick it up right and and finally as i mentioned earlier there are different levels so uh, uh, you know understand the guidelines and uh, see which uh, user base that you cater to and which country you're coming from and try and adhere to one of the standards and i think that is a first step to start with and and really what's the next step at the design phase uh, it is all about you know starting as early as possible Um, I would say um, I already talked about analysis and planning phase, thinking about product, thinking about user personas. I think the immediate next step would be to start creating the UX prototypes. Um, It is also very important that you uh, bake in accessibility at that stage early. Um, So there are companies uh, who follow some sort of design kits, which will help them, uh, you know, make products seamless across different streams. Like you can take a look at Atlassian design kit. Um, you can take a look at uh, BBC, British Broadcasting. Uh, um, they have a, a global experience gel. So GEL gel is nothing but the global experience language where uh, it is a document which shows you what an every accordion would should look like. How does the button should look like? 
how a link should be given. So, you know, by doing that way, you're making your product seamless. Um, if you're a global product company, um, so that the UI itself is more seamless and looks pleasing and same across different, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, different, different products, as well as more importantly, accessible, right? And uh, when you look at the design phase also, you can actually um, determine what are the colors that I'm going to do. Like, I think the first thing that you will do is, you know, choosing a logo or, uh, you know, picking up what, what should be the color theme of my website or the product. Right. I think in that way, if you think early about color contrast requirements or the color contrast guidelines from the WCG that I showed you earlier, I think uh, you can easily, uh, you know, cater to uh, make sure that the color contrast is covered. And of course, think about uh, technology that are inaccessible, like Flash, uh, you know, around the age, Flash is gone, but I think it's still there at some places. And, and now even Canvas are coming into picture. Um, uh, so you can think about carefully choosing the tech, uh, making sure that it's accessible and uh, and more importantly, con conduct a usability testing uh, outside your organization, which will help you really understand, um, you know, where your product is, um, whether it's inclusive or not. And of course, the next is development phase where things get interesting, um, where uh, it's very hard to convince your developers. Uh, but I think, as I mentioned earlier, if it's collaborative effort uh, from the beginning, and I think this is something that can easily be uh, tackled. Um, in my experience, um, I've seen the checklist has uh, worked often very well. So, um, you know, for especially coming from a developer mindset, uh, it is an essential at a planning stage when product requirements are defined and the design stage is created. And during development, the implementation of the product begins where if you have a checklist of, uh, you know, things, uh, and I have a link I'll, I'll actually share in the references or a little later. Uh, I think most of the things uh, are, are can be, uh, you know, uh, looked at that checklist and make sure that you're making uh, changes. Like it, given at a story level, if you want to make a change, you know, make sure that you abide by the checklist. I think that's that's good enough. Um, and uh, I think when it comes to accessibility, if you ask most developers, they would say, yeah, I will fix it up with ARIA, right? So that is something that we should don't think about. So usage of ARIA is should be done very judiciously. Um, it's not like a patchwork to, you know, patch fix for your accessibility, right? So if you properly use your native HTML contracts, uh, constructs, it will automatically fix accessibility issues for you. So you don't have to explicitly use or learn about ARIA attributes so that you will fix accessibility. Accessibility is not just ARIA, it's more than that. So even your proper HTML constructs will do the you know, job for you. And more importantly, as I have as a second point, design what everyone can use and not what is easy to develop, right? And next is the most important in the testing phase where uh, you should start considering people with disabilities for user testing. Uh, that is one of the foremost things. And um, we have a lot of tools and plugins in the accessibility space. Uh, and uh, it's not a silver bullet solution in, in, in any way, uh, but it is estimated that it will try and fix you um, some 40 to 50% of accessibility issues for you. Um, as I've keep on saying, something is better than nothing. So I think some start is better. Uh, it'll help you fast track your process. You can include it within your CICD pipeline. I think that's all great. And next, uh, if uh, as, as a testing strategy, if you're a QA or a, or a test manager, um, or even if you're you know someone in, coming from a C-suite who's listening to this talk, even now or a little later in a YouTube, uh, I think um, make sure uh, you know accessibility is also baked in as part of your test pyramid. Um, like you have various levels of testing, like unit integration and end-to-end. -end, so make sure uh, you know we, there are ways that we could include accessibility each levels, which I'll cover that in shortly. And um, Specifically use screen readers. I think that is one of the main things and I'll actually have a demo and I'll be happy to show you in a couple of things, right? So, and and what is after testing? I think man, uh, I don't have a slide next talks about what is next. I think it's more around, you know, maintenance and production monitoring and stuff. Uh, I think a couple of you would have seen or most of you have sort of a way to look at uh, synthetic monitoring uh, as a way. Uh, I think you can make an accessibility there as well. I think there's no harm in doing it. Uh, since you're already doing it at various levels, uh, there could be something broken uh, where uh, you don't know, but I think it's, it's great if something tells you that, uh, you know, something is not accessible. Um, and uh, you can go and um, um, ask companies uh, which does accessibility certifications to give you a VPAT or sort of a conformance uh, document. Um, uh, so QAs can learn accessibility, developers can learn accessibility. Uh, but in, when it comes to certification, um, it is it is a little risky. So uh, 
uh, um, ThoughtWorks doesn't do that, um, or uh, I highly doubt if uh, services companies uh, would, would do that. But there are specific, uh, um, you know, uh, companies who are dedicated for that, who knows the in and outs of um, accessibility and who will certify you where you are up to, right? So with that, I'll deep dive onto uh, the accessibility testing, right? So when we um, start early, you know, starting early brings in a lot of benefits. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it's less costly than, you know, uh, looking at, uh, um, you know, solving uh, lawsuits and stuff like that. <clears throat> and uh, you should also make sure the designers, the, the product owners and everyone is on all board, onboarded. Uh, I think the most robust way to ensure the long-term accessibility uh, is to make sure that the accessibility as a knowledge is being, uh, you know, inculcated within the culture. And, and if inclusive practices is not one of the culture, I think go ahead and make and advocate that for your organization and, and keep that as, you know, uh, upcoming uh, uh, bets to something that you could solve. There is no substitute for real user feedback, include people with disabilities to test. I think this is something that I always say, uh, there are tools and we are super smart and good enough. And there are some tools which claim AI can solve things for you from accessibility. Um, honestly, I don't believe. Um, so please go ahead and include the real people with disabilities to test. Um, so um, what is something that we can test for? So you talk about I think if you just you know quickly step back and see what we have learned so far, uh, we talked about I you know accessibility, what is it all about, and I spoke you know, and I mentioned to you about some guidelines, and I told you about there are different levels about it, and then we slowly transitioned into um, how accessibility can be fit into different levels, right? And now we are specifically deep diving onto uh, accessibility testing as a phase, and what is something that you could you know do, keep on doing, and and. These are some of the things that you can actually test for, like you can test for keyboard navigation, landmarks, color contrast, assistive devices. And in the previous slide, if you remember, I had a point which said that uh, it's not a silver bullet, which is still true. But uh, if you remember, it had a, a mention that around 40 to 50 percent it can solve. So that is this slide talks about, right? So if you make sure these things are covered, I think that easy 40 to 50 is automatically covered. And again, this is not a silver bullet sort of like make sure you go test this and it'll automatically be 50% done. No, it's not that it's this is coming in from my experience that uh, I have made, made sure these things are uh, covered in, in the applications that I test and I contribute to. Um, and I've seen a uh, good progress with that. Uh, with that, um, I have uh, four demos to show you. Um, we'll see if I have enough time to show that you know, quickly uh, one by one. Uh, firstly, I will show you a voiceover demo. Uh, I think as I've been mentioning about uh, screen reader testing is something very important that you should go and advocate for. Um, if, if you're a developer, if you're a QA, and if you don't have accessibility, that's totally fine. Uh, when you do an exploratory testing, uh, just turn on your voiceover if you're on a Mac or if you can install tools like JAWS for Windows. And, and even if you test or develop for Android and iOS, it, it has similar screen reader options, uh, which is nothing but the assistive devices. We call it as assistive devices, right? Uh, where it'll help people with disabilities or people who can't see, who can't hear, uh, or will use these devices to uh, navigate things around. And with that, I'll quickly show you. I'm hoping you can hear the voiceover. Okay, I've turned on voiceover. Chrome bit busy, busy. Welcome. I'm feeling lucky. Button. Google search by voice. Search list box pop up. Menu pop up combo box. A G I L E Agile I N D I A. India Agile India. Google search. Leaving Agile India. Google search. Google Chrome. In cop link. So I had a quick lead pause so that I can tell you and I walk through. So if you look at the, this is nothing but the voiceover, right? So as and when you move changes around, like whether if you use a mouse or a keyboard, uh, it will actually start dictating uh, whatever you see, right? So if you see, um, when I press tab on my keyboard, it automatically showed skip to main content. So which is also one of the things that we should be making sure uh, that is covered. Uh, if you're already testing a web application, um, uh, load up the, you know, refresh the URL and just blindly click a tab button on your, uh, uh, keyboard and it should show something like that because automatically it'll skip to the main content on the page. So in this case, the results on Agile India is very important for me so that I can skip into it. Rather, I don't want you know the uh, voiceover to keep talking about all news, maps, images, and all of those stuff. Uh, but in this case, it automatically uh, moved into it. So now what I'm going to do is uh, um, click on Agile India, go inside their website, and then do a few stuff. Agile tools, collab tools, collab link. Agile India 2021 Asia's premier and largest conference on HTTPS colon Agile India 2021 Asia's premier and largest co leaving Agile in link link and link speakers link schedule link.
I don't know if you closely watched it. It shows uh, it said link twice, but it didn't highlight anything, which is an issue that uh, you know. Uh, uh, I think I'm one of the organizers. So we as a team should fix our website definitely. Um, but I think um, after that, it shows you uh, where the focus is on, like link sponsors and schedules. Um, and uh, most importantly, it didn't show uh, the skip to main content as well. I'll quickly so link updates. Link 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 speakers. Speakers, Agile India to felt link, 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 Agile India light, current page, link, schedule, link, sponsor, link. So in this case, if you see, I moved on to the speakers page, but then um, it's still uh, dictating my, uh, you know, the menu, which as a user, I don't want it, right? So you'll be annoyed by looking at it again. So in this case, I ideally, I would like to have a skip to main content uh, button so that I'll directly jump into uh, the most uh, the interested speaker I'm in so that I can listen Updates, to their talk. Link. Our value link, link. Agile India Light. List six item. Current page link. Speakers link. Schedule link. Sponsors link. Link. A link. 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 Image. Aino Corey link. Image. A link. Image. Al Shalloway link. Image. Alberta Saranzo link. Image. Anand Bagma link. Image. Angie Dwell. Right. So I think I hope this would have give you some, uh, you know, view about how, you know, voice over testing is all about. Um, so now if you're testing on a web application or whatever uh, desktop application, um, turn on this voice over and see what it talks about. Right. If you see, um, and this is not bad, you know, if you can, it mentions link speakers, link schedule so that I, I if I'm blind, I'm able to understand. I'll just click on enter button and I'll go into the into that page but if i'm something uh you know i can't see where it goes uh i, I don't have an idea which 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 uh, page i'm clicking about it and that's something that you should look at and now um in order to you know look at uh, how things uh you can what are the different things that you can do um so uh the next thing that i usually do is to use plugins um so one of the things uh, that i use is axe dev tools web accessibility testing so you can just include a plugin and then just go from there um where i okay this is a oh an application that i uh, built uh, i mean uh, reusing from harris harris from dq um, has this wonderful um a workshop that I uh, attended and I uh, had an opportunity to reuse the same stuff. So if I go and inspect, uh, and I've already added the X dev tools in my browser. So all I'm going to just click is uh, a scan. I click on dev tools and I scan all of my page and it showed me it has two issues, right? So uh, automatically it shows um, element must have sufficient contrast. And of course uh, this one, right? Uh, it's very important and it is one of the, uh, you know, perceivable guidelines that uh, even people with uh, color blindness or with less vision or low vision should be able to look at the applications. Uh, and it will highlight you and also you can go and inspect and find out why it is there. So this is the color button. And one of the quick fixes that even, you know, rather than finding a bug about uh, color contrast, you can even guide your developers and say that, hey, uh, this is a bug that the dev tool shows. So when you click on this, it actually shows you by contrast ratio is just 1.19. But uh, if you're abiding by the rule AA or AAA, the conformance levels that I mentioned to you earlier, it should it says that if you're looking at abiding by AA, it should al already be at level three. But right now it is just at 1.919. So simply you can just you know drag this bubble and come inside this line which means that, okay, you are good from a AA level, which means that right now I'm at 3.7. And also you can actually naturally notice that this is becoming more visible, even as a naked, you know, eye user. And if you're, as I mentioned, if you're super aggressive about accessibility and wanted to be the gold standard, you know, further drag even more down. And you can see this is also picked where your contrast ratio is 5.73. And this is a generic rule, right? And this is this doesn't change per the color uh, that you're looking at. So in 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 any page that you take, um, if you're abiding by having 4.5 as a contrast ratio, and that's good enough. Uh, that will work simply work for any page, a foreground, background. So now you can see the text is also more visible. So this is one of the things that you could see, and uh, it has been estimated that uh, at least out of uh, you remember the WAI group that I mentioned. So they estimate that at least 97% of uh, accessibility issues that they have seen uh, will fall under six categories. 
only six categories so if you remember what is it six categories and make sure you fix them you're already in a better, much better shape than uh, you know having an application that is not accessible uh, in that six uh, color contrast is one of them i know now, by now you'll be super interested to know just give me that six and i'm done <laughs> uh, don't worry i have a slide and i'll show you uh, towards the end of the session and um, microsoft also have something called accessibility insights uh, this is something that uh, you could install it is more or less uh, like axe dev tools and and more importantly you should also heard about lighthouse which has accessibility i guess as well so uh, lighthouse by google under the hood uses axe core uh, which is nothing but this axe dev tools so in my opinion it's it's either is fine so it have to you know keep on using everything so if you use either of these that is all great and um, this is just for you know a plugin based testing or a screen reader based testing uh, this is as i mentioned accessibility is everyone's job everyone in the team can do it right so now if you are a qa or a dev and if you're looking at what do you want to do um, as i mentioned uh, you could come and uh, fix this uh, you know uh, we have changed this color to be you know say uh, 4.7 or 5.7 uh, grab the hex value go to your css file and you would change it as a dev and that's pretty much it right so now uh, what are the other things that you could do uh, in here uh, i have uh, two different um, workspaces i think both of them will be in my github page you can take a look at it um so i have um an end to end test uh, folder which has a complete uh, test for each pages which is nothing but this page it's a simple website i'll just quickly it's an agile india which has actions so if i just do tab it should come here uh, you know and then keep on going uh, tab specifically and i'll do uh, stuff and if i go to about page it's just you know a couple of things around here and also a contact on a form where if i keep on uh doing a tab it should focus each and everything uh and uh go. so which means that you know if you don't have access to trackpad or even a mouse you should be able to uh you know navigate via keyboard so that is one of the things that i mentioned on the qa uh, you know testing aspect as well where keyboard navigation is one of the things that you should look at it and um i have this website we are closely running on time let me quickly show this up um so yeah right now if you see i'll just refresh this website and i'll do the tabbing i'm not using a trackpad at all i chose skip to main content and then it's coming here so now i don't i didn't click on skip to content now if i'm doing skip to main content it automatically comes to the contact page and now i'm clicking in um message and asking naresh what do you call sheep you know without no legs it's just a small pun i don't mean to say he says it's a cloud right so you could imagine it's just a diagram of the cloud um so everything is done within a keyboard so you could imagine uh, without using a mouse you are able to do stuff which is really great and if you are able to do this in your applications and that is what more important as well and now uh, specifically coming back to uh, you know testing as such what is something that you could really do um, well um, we had a menu button which has the actions right so um, ideally what we should be doing is focus on the menu button the actions and then uh, without using mouse or a trackpad if you uh, click on the you know up arrow and down arrow it should be able to traverse up and forth right i think that is exactly what you know the test does here where uh, you're trying to look at it and there are many other stuff uh, which we have written here like role as a button uh, and and even like say for example let me go to my index um role is a very important um, item like say for example we have a menu item and we say uh, uh, the role of that button is a menu so if i go and change like say for example uh, you know agile india it shows uh, an, an error error right so which is nothing but um an error which shows elements with aria roles must used to valid and non abstract aria roles and this uh, error message is coming in from uh, an eslin plugin that i'm using in this repository which is called uh, jsx ali aria role so by this what i'm trying to say is you don't have to keep on writing an end to end test or use a plugin or use a screen reader to, to do testing uh, but as a developer when you write when you you know write your html code if you make any small mistakes it will automatically show you this is nothing but 
code linting or scanning tool which we normally use right and this is something that you could use and and uh, if you'll go back to my package.json i have something here like slint plugin jsx alley so as a dev it'll be super awesome it'll be helpful like when you write a component a piece of code it'll tell you where it goes wrong and the next uh, demo that i had was uh, a completely uh, uh, you know a web driver io based demo um, where um, it'll, you know, if you have, this is nothing but a page object pattern where I have a base page, home page, and a menu page, and I have a spec file, and I run the spec file, um, it'll, you know, the web driver test will go to that website and land on that website. As in, when it lands, I'm using Axe to scan my page, and I'm just saving that results in a CSV file. So this is something that it shows as a result that ensure contrast between a foreground and color meets. And, um, and it'll tell you, uh, it'll give you a HTML dump also so that you can fix it things online. And more than that, one of the things, the beautiful things about Axe that I like really is all about the link that it shows. Like when you click on this link, um, it'll actually show you what are the things that you would want to fix as well, right? So uh, it'll also show you how to fix the problem and uh, why it matters so that you also learn while you fix things. So that is one of the good things. So go ahead, you know, use tools like Axe and I'll open source it in my GitHub repo um, at the rate of Manoj9788 and that's my GitHub ID. Uh, so you can keep watching and I'll keep doing that. Yeah, just a heads up, like, yeah, we just have a couple of minutes more, that's it. Sure. Yeah, okay. we are. I've so I'm um, putting this all together. Um, here I present to you, uh, the accessibility test pyramid we have seen about accessibility you know test pyramid or you know the diamond or a champion trophy um i wanted to try different so here is the accessibility test pyramid i showed you about the i have static linting checks um so there you go that's at the bottom uh, you can tools like that so it, this shows you accessibility is everyone's responsibility where uh, uh, user persona something you could do it early when it comes to development uh, right when 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 you code it'll show you uh, using those plugins and as a unit test if you're using axe core or a just tools you can integrate with those and do some sort of integration testing and as a QA if you're running an end-to-end -end test uh, automatically you can integrate with Selenium and Cypress and also use the plugins that I mentioned to you right I think that I showed you is something that you can do now to scale it further th so th by the moment you integrate into um, the test pyramid or uh, have an auto into an automated framework you can obviously scale this into a path to production right and of course i wanted to present you again an inclusive path to production i don't know if i've seen this word uh, everywhere outside but this is something i think it's quite new so inclusive path to production uh, right from concept to deploy to production to disaster recovery um, there are different stages uh, as per uh, your product uh, you will you have different builds and and this is something that i, uh, I currently practice and advocate uh, for my ThoughtWorks clients, where uh, where where you can do what sort of accessibility testing. So as you see, the things in that are grayed out or something that is not necessary for this session, but also very important. Uh, but uh, the the things that are highlighted in Ali or something that is very important and also a key takeaway for you as well. So um, take a look at it offline if you have any questions. You can ask me around it. And uh, this this is nothing but the six. Um, common errors that I talked to you about. Uh, so low contract stacks, missing alternative, uh, missing input labels, uh, you know, empty links, empty buttons, document language. So these are the things that are um, uh, significantly uh, will improve if you, uh, you know, make sure that this is not something happening in your uh, things. So I think, I think uh, this mostly end of my um, session. Uh, with that, uh, I just wanted to thank you so much for people joining. And I consider uh, this as a passion led us here. Um, you know, uh, I, I see a, a couple of people are already here. And um, if you're already coming into this session, which means that you already care for accessibility. So that inclusive mindset is already within you, or even for people watching this offline in YouTube or a little later, um, uh, if you're reaching out this session, it's already, you know, it's known that you're, uh, you know, accessible enough and, and you know, go back um, and create an inclusive culture at your uh, company. Uh, be an inclusive tech disruptor, not just a tech disruptor, but as an inclusive tech disruptor. Uh, and I do hope that you had some of the key takeaways from this session and then, you know, make the world uh, more digitally connected with uh, inclusive inclusivity. And this is some of the links to refer. You can go ahead and refer.
uh and and lastly thanks for the opportunity to talk about an important topic that i most care about uh and not only my talk and i think there were two other talks that spoke about importance of agility and uh, inclusivity uh, so please go ahead and check out the other talks as well uh and i think as a conference i think this is something uh, we care about a lot and um and lots of gifts out there and happy uh, thanksgiving and a merry christmas and a new year to everyone thank yeah. you yeah thank you so very much so there was so much information about all about accessibility and especially inclusive path to production was something uh, really new and uh, yeah there's so much learnings there um, and i'm sure a lot of people have enjoyed this session and they got a lot uh, of takeaways